there. This is Christina Louisa, and I am here with a curated nest today showing you some of the new products that we have in store. So if you are watching this live, I will try to post this later to our YouTube channel so that if you missed anything or you want to catch up to it later, once you see the pro finished product, you'll see that it's pretty cool. So maybe you'll want to join in later. But for now, let's just go over some of the, the processes to get to that uh, project. So I'm going to start with um, chalk paint. So I'm going to do an encaustic project today, an encaustic mixed media project. And as I talk, I'll explain the properties. But essentially, wax needs um, something to adhere to. So what I'm doing is I'm priming my panel with the chalk paint and I'm using a white because I want my final design to pop but we have it in we have the chalk paint in like dozens and dozens of colors we have two brands we have Colorantic and we have um, Dixie Belle now the Colorantic comes in the small one so if you want the trial size it's two ounces I believe um, it's only available in the color antic but the dixie bell has a wider range of colors but they're both fantastic and today i am just priming with my color antic white and let's see so um okay so that panel you would just for the magic of tv let's just say i'm going to turn off this overhead light give me one sec i think you might be able to see a little bit better without it it's a little bit dark but I think it's going to be better in the long run. So I'm just priming the panel with the white and it has to dry, which is why I'm just having a separate panel here because I've already gone ahead and primed this one with the white. And then now you'll notice these polka dots. So I'm going to show you how I got the polka dots on here. Again, super fun, super cool. I'm going to do it right on here. Um, your paint needs to be dry by this point um, in order to do the the next step but i am using one of our background stencils so we carry a large variety of stencils now and i believe this one is called i can't remember we have several polka dot stencils but this is absolutely one of my favorites um now if you so there, there's two ways to use stencils one is to place them down and to tape them in place that sometimes you get bleed underneath um so that's that's just one way to do it the other way to do it is to use a temporary spray adhesive and i just don't want to spray while i'm talking to you guys because it'll get on my phone and and my my camera so i normally use the repositionable um, adhesive spray and that way i can avoid bleed through but for now i'm going to get this a little bit better into position so that you can see and then normally this would be stuck really well because of the spray that's on the back and so having that there now let's prepare our paste so our paste is going to be the the color the raised dots that you saw in my in my panel actually what i'm going to do is i can bring this one up here to show you so i'm not sure if you can see but there's a lot of texture in here and then these are raised and because i'm using a product called um, chalky paste and i can also use the paper paste so I think that's backwards for you guys sorry but anyway the chalk paste and the paper paste both work equally well um, with encaustic the chalk paste comes in several different colors um, white brown black but I'm using the white because I'm going to show you how to tint it okay so using the white paste I'm going to place some of it on my paper palette okay and now I want to change the color of it. So I could add more chalk paint to it, but it might make it a little sloppier than I'm looking for. So I'm actually going to use this other product that we carry now, which I'm absolutely in love with. It is Natural Earth Pigment. And the reason I'll tell you very quickly that I am um, excited about these products is that this can tint your encaustics, this can tint your chalk paints, this can create an oil paint so that you can actually make um, color pigments to to um, to paint with and also to make encaustic this is so versatile and it's actually healthy and it's not going to be harmful when you are heating it 
in, um, in encaustic as we do. So when you're heating things, there's a, a volatile um, expulsion of, of chemicals, right, when you heat up oil paints and things like that. So that's why we always talk about in encaustic having great ventilation. It's because of the heating process that's releasing a lot of these um, chemicals. So the nice thing about these natural earth pigments that we're carrying is that A, they all mix together so you can make your own wonderful colors. We've got a color chart. I'm just getting to learn how to use all the things. The recipes are on the inside. But I've just been playing and experimenting with mixing it into products that we already have and then also making my own chalk paint out of it. So that'll be on another video, but for now I want to show you how to make the chalk paste. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to open up the bag and I'm going to take a little bit out using one of our palette knives. Just a little plastic palette knife is fine. I'm going to add that color and then I'm going to mix it into the chalk paste. So I'm using my palette knife and I'm just smushing it all together. I'm gonna to show you this. I'm gonna smush it all together and keep mixing. And now I'm making a tinted chalk paste. So again, I could do this with the paper paste, um, but I'm just going to do it right now with the chalky paste because I like the texture of it. And then now, if I want to alter that color, I can start adding different things. So I brought out a little bit of the um, yellow ochre. And I didn't bring an extra palette knife, so I'm just going to bring that out. Drop a little bit on. And when you buy these colors, um, I've already been playing with this and experimenting with this. It doesn't even look like I've made a dent in it. So value-wise, I mean, how quickly do we go through a tube of paint, right? Some acrylic paint or something like that, or you risk your oil paints drying out really quickly and your acrylics drying out, and then you're left with, um, you know, we're just wasting it really, and it's so expensive. So this is really nice because you mix just what you want. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the turquoise. I think I added a little more yellow than I would like. Whoops. Do as I do, not as I say, right? Do as I say, not as I do. That's the way it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to remix. And I can keep altering this and I can add white and I can add any color I want. I could use my color chart and be more specific. But I'm just going by feel here and by look and seeing what I like. You can see this rich, creamy, thick paste is just beautiful texture and it'll dry like a very um, thick modeling paste sort of texture, but without the gloss. And that is what's essential to encaustic painting. So if you want to add encaustic on top of that, you need to have that matte finish without any of the um, gloss to it that modeling paste does. So then I am going to put that aside while I look for my applicator, which I had here a moment ago. This is the problem with having a messy desk. And when you're fixed in one place, being on a video. Anyway, I do have an applicator for it, but for now I'll just use a standby um, flexible card. So let me show you how we're going to do this. So I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to pick up the paste using my applicator. In this case, it's my card. And I'm just going to go right over my stencil. And in this case, I'm going to go directly over the dots. There we go, to create a nice raised texture. Awesome. Okay, I'll remove the stencil and voila. Okay, so you can see here, we started with the primed um, finish, or sorry, with the, the, sorry, the primed chalk paint. Then we added the raised, you can see them there, uh, turquoise colored chalky dots. Okay, so 
now I'm going to just again show you by the magic of, of television here that I've already got it ready and prepared. So I am using one of our brand new um, panels and as I was mentioning before we have different depths of panels. This is just a regular cradle panel um, in the gallery depth which is one and a half inches but we also carry the two and a half or sorry the two inches and the three inches so you can get some really beautiful depth panels in store now i forgot to turn off my heater so give me two seconds and i'm going to go turn that off because it might be pretty loud Okay, it's like having the dog barking or something in the background, right? So, anyway, so, oh, hi, Maria. I can see who's watching. So, yes, I'm back doing lives again. So, this is super exciting. I'm testing my Wi-Fi. Um, so, you guys should give me any feedback about the Wi-Fi because I'm in a new studio now. And this is the first day that I've had Wi-Fi in the studio. So, I'm just testing it out today. And, yeah. So, anyway, so let me know how that is for you guys. Okay, so what I want to do with this now is I want to add this branch that is on tissue paper. Silence that. Great, Pam. Awesome. So, so far, the Wi-Fi is a success out here. I'm really happy. We've moved to the country and I was really questioning that. Okay, so I'm going to tear this out, but I'm going to show you how awesome this is in just one second because... I think when people will see how fantastic these products are and work together and how versatile they are, you're going to want to scoop them up right away. So you can see this lovely branch is on um, the rice paper. So on the rice paper, you can print, you can do all sorts of things. We'll save that for other videos. But for today, I'm going to show you how I got that branch on this rice paper. So I'm going to put that here for now just so we have a nice surface where you can see and then maybe I can tilt the camera just a wee bit more there we go of course this is never a good idea to do this while you're while you're videoing but any and while you're live but anyway let's give this a whirl okay so we have um, a couple new products that I'm also integrating into this demo and that would be so this rice paper we've had for a very long time and we actually have um, we have great uh, rice paper uh, sorry a great special a great deal on the rice paper so I think you get 12 huge sheets for $12 so if you haven't scooped that up already make sure you get some of our rice paper because it is a fantastic deal and I can't tell you how often I use it all right, so the next product that I'm going to uh, promote is the rubber stamps. So this is one of our new rubber stamps. And as you can see, it's huge. There's lots of pieces. It's, um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's great. This one has the birds. And what's this one called? It's a 13 piece something or other. Um, I'm not sure which this one's called, but anyway, it's the only one we have with birds and, oh, there it is, springtime. So birds and branches. So I'm going to show you how to get that um, inked up and then transferred onto your rice paper. So I'm going to lay this down and, you know what, maybe I'll bring in this other panel so that you can see a little more clearly what I'm doing. There we go. So I'll lay that one on top and I'm gonna put the rice paper down. So here I have my, my branch and large stamps have always been a bit of an enigma to me on how to ink them, but using the furniture design industries lead they teach you how to do this stuff and so this is just how I have used it from the products we have in the store. We have a product that is a blank stamp pad. Honest to goodness, it's been like one of my favorite things because I use the tube ink 
that we have and then you can use um, the tube ink we have is permanent and it's it's awesome because it's not going to smudge or smear later on and anyway so I am going to I, right now I have an old ink that I'm going to show you but we are using this new one that I love you're going to ink up your stamp pad and then using a little applicator the one that I can't find right now but we're going to use this one for now I'm just going to show you I'm just inking up the stamp pad so that's nice and juicy that's the key is that you can't have a dry stamp pad and then I'm going to make my branch fully inked up so again remember you want it nice and juicy nice and wet you do not want to have um, use a dry stamp pad you have to re-ink every time if you're using a large one like this because it does require a lot of um, a lot of ink to get a nice registration. So now I'm going to put it face down onto the rice paper. And if I'd remembered to bring my brayer over here, you would see that I would magically just press on that effortlessly with my brayer. But of course I forgot that and we now have brayers in stock. So this is super exciting for me because we have expanded our, our art supplies um, to be really just all really cool mixed media products that work well for my Two Worlds Collide, which is both with encaustic and with um, and with you know acrylic painting or watercolor painting or, or any type of mixed media painting so I'm trying to stay away from products when I'm selecting products for the store that aren't compatible with the encaustic so that's why I'm really excited about all the new stuff we've got going on so I'll remove the branch and you will see voila there's my branch on the rice paper which you can see is translucent so it's going to be fantastic on my project let's put that aside and we will move on to the next step so i have my branch ready to go and i think i'm going to place it there but i'm going to actually use the encaustic to adhere it so for now i'm just going to make sure that it fits so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut off all the excess bits and go and then on this line I'm going to cut this relatively straight now around the branch around the branch I just tore the edges so I don't have to be precise on that one and then let's just see how much on this side I have to take off So folding works wonderfully to give you an edge for which to cut. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside and we are going to move to the next super exciting step. So I'm gonna grab my encaustic and I'm gonna put it right here. Now encaustic needs to be heated. So um, this isn't gonna be a full on demo on encaustic but I will just sort of explain what I'm doing as we go. If you are interested in more information about encaustic, I encourage you to go to my website to christinalovisa.com and look up the painting with fire. It's on the main page, just scroll down and you'll see a link there to a fantastic program um, led by um, Laura Murphy of Essence of Morani and it is just absolutely an incredible value encaustic course and it is just so, 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 um, incredible it, it it's been now it's going into its second year I'm one of the instructors and I have to say it is a phenomenal value and a phenomenal course and anyone who's watching would tell you that that is absolutely the truth okay so now I'm going to grab my encaustic I'm gonna put it right here in order to do this it has to stay molten so I'm going to do this relatively quickly. Like I said, it won't be a full encaustic demo. It's more for people who are um, familiar with it. But basically, I'm just adding my encaustic 
which is a molten beeswax mixed with a tree sap called Damar resin. And it is just so foggy and dreamy and luxurious. But you can't put it over top, directly over top of acrylic, which is why I'm always looking for products that are compatible with the encaustic. And if you go to a curatednest.com and you're looking at products and you have any questions about the compatibility or whatever, just make sure you fire me off a question before you order. I'll be happy to answer. In fact, any one of our team can help you with that as well. Pam and Judy. Okay, so I have a nice layer on there. I'm going to put this back on the heat. That way if I need to add more, I'll be able to go back to it. And then now, of course, I need to fuse it. So I'm going to use my torch for expediency. I could also use my iron. Um, oh, hey, Pam. Hey, Renee. So I'm just going to use my torch and I'm going to fuse this. So fusing does a few things. One, it creates a smoother finish, so it doesn't have the brush strokes. Two, it allows the wax to fuse itself to the layer underneath. So encaustic actually means to burn in or to fuse in, and that's exactly what I'm doing by, by applying the heat. I'm fusing this layer in. I can't move this while it's molten to show you what it looks like. We have to let that fog up. It does not take very long, but um, as a little recap for those of you who are just tuning in, I'm showing you um, just a handful of the new products we have at a curated nest. And the beauty of these products is that they are, uh, because I am Two Worlds Collide obsessed, which is combining mixed media with encaustic, um, I've worked really hard to source products that will work well with the encaustic. So I'm going to um, be doing lives on a regular basis from now on to show you these products. So don't worry if you know this is, I'm going too fast for you, there's too much information. We'll upload these to our YouTube channel as well so you can watch. But um, yeah, so that's basically what I'm doing. So now you can see the dots are completely encapsulated. I have a nice smooth finish on everything. The wax is still warm, so that's okay right now. I'm going to apply the branch. So I'm going to push the branch or the uh, tissue paper into, not tissue paper, rice paper. See, I can't do two things at once apparently. So I'm pushing the rice paper into the warm wax. It's not gonna stick, there's no adhesive going on here. So I am actually sandwiching it between layers of wax. I'm gonna apply another thin layer of wax and fuse it again. So let me grab my wax. So if I had left my wax sitting here, it might cool to the point where I wouldn't be able to use it anymore. So there we go. So I'm brushing this on. And then there are a few ways that I can smooth it. One is um, with an iron. And that's probably the more traditional way of doing this. However, I'm, I'm a torch girl through and through. And, oh, actually we have torches now too, so I can explain that as well. So I'm using the Iowa Tawny torch. Um, if you're shipping it, you can just buy the head, the torch head. You can. Um, uh, we don't ship the, the gas containers, but what you're looking for in the gas containers is you're actually looking for the camping fuel. So butane camping fuel um, in Canada, it is sold uh, by a company called Woods. It's in Canadian Tire. It's in a lot of different hardware stores and it's a camping fuel. It's the top that's more important to look at. It's got like a circle mount and then there's a hole in it and that is how the Iowa Tawny torch head fits on. Um, it also comes with a base so that you can stand your torch up and not have it tip over while you're doing that. So to turn it on is simply you just turn on the dial at the back and press the ignition, turn it down, turn it up, change the, um, you see what I mean? You can change the intensity of the heat. 
I like a nice tight flame that way and a nice smaller flame this way. And then this is how I'm going to fuse this in. So I'm just gonna go a couple light passes over the whole thing. I don't wanna to melt too hot too fast. Um, the risk of melting too hot too fast is that you'll end up with creating a hole and creating a hole in your encaustic wax is really difficult to fix. Um, you would think it would be simply just go back and, back and add wax, but it's really um, challenging. So what I tend to do is I just make light passes with my torch and this rice paper is laying in here super flat. So I'm really happy about that. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit There we go. So now depending on how much um, fogginess basically I want to this branch, I could go back and add another layer. So I do see one little edge actually which is lifting up. So I'm going to show you how I get rid of that little ledge. So that would be the rice paper. You guys can't see it really from your angle. But I do, I can see it from my angle so I'm just going to go and remove it. So using a nice flat edge that's not going to cut something, like cut the, the tissue paper or the wax wire. Remember the wax is super delicate, it's warm, it's soft, so we don't need anything with too much pressure or cutting edge. All I'm doing is I'm pushing out that, that um, wrinkle and making sure the rice paper is well incorporated. So in doing that, I removed a little bit of the wax, but that's okay. And then now very lightly again I'm going to fuse just to make sure it's nice and smooth and it's lying flat. Don't need much of a fuse on that one. Okay, so let me show you this now. So you can see I've got the branch in the bottom, I've got the dots on the top, and I might want to set that, that branch back a little bit, but for now let's just leave it and then I'm going to show you the next step. So this part I'm super excited to show you um, because as a big fan of crows and ravens, and I know many of you are, we have this new stencil in the store which has different size crows on it. And I am just absolutely in love with it. And I am going to place the crow on the branch, the largest crow, and while this is wet, if I had a brayer again, we do carry lovely brayers in the store, but I just forgot to bring it. I would just push the stencil sort of into it. I'm not pushing it into the warm wax to make an impression. I'm actually just trying to make a seal. So I'm going around with my finger and I'm just making sure that the stencil is not going to move. So if your wax is cold, right? If your encaustic is cold at this point, you're gonna to wanna to go and heat it and then Make sure that you're pushing this into um, set wax, meaning it's not a puddle, and you want the wax to be um, warm though, just so that you can push that down and make the seal. All right, so here it goes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my colored white wax. And the way I made my colored white wax was just with the encaustic medium pellets. And then I added the natural earth pigment in the white. So I could have also made this into an oil paint and then added it. The oil paint is also um, super safe. It's a natural earth and you make it a uh, product and you make it with the walnut oil that we also sell in the store. But I actually just added the pigment right to this. So I'll be able to um, demonstrate that using white so that you'll get a little bit of contrast. So when I put um, the encaustic through a stencil, I'm going to avoid the edges at first and I'm going to build up the middle. There we go. So if you start with the edges, then you tend to end up with like a puddle. So I'm just going to build up the middle. Remember we want the volume to be in the middle. So if it's a fine stencil, you won't be able to do this, but because this is um, quite a huge bird, I am just going to build up 
the body part first using my wax. Okay, so now that I've got that, now I'm gonna to start to go out to the edges. So when you're doing that, you don't want too much drippy wax. Let me try and hold that up so you can't. You can, don't want the wax to drip too much, so I'm just going to hold the brush to the side for a moment, let it get rid of all of those drippy bits, and then I'm gonna go from that, from that inside, which was nice and big, and I'm gonna to go to the outside of the stencil where I want the edge to be. So again, just from the middle, going out to the edge, not too drippy. So we can clean up the edges later, so if it's not perfect, don't stress. Don't stress, we can clean it up later with a tool. But for now, I am just getting out right to the edge on everything. Now, of course, I could use any color, right? For this crow, I could use any color, but I want to surprise you with something else. So I'm just using white now, but I could really use any color. Don't we all love surprises? Can't you just wait to see what's going to happen? I hope it works because otherwise it's going to be super let down. Okay, so I think I have the crow fairly covered now. And so what I'm gonna do is, instead of using my torch, I have a Mylar stencil. And because this is plastic, I'm not gonna use my torch at this point. I'm just gonna use a heat gun. Now it'll be noisy for a second, but I'm just trying to get rid of the brush strokes, um, but not melt it fully, because if I melt it fully, I'm actually gonna have it run underneath the stencil. So it's just gonna be a nice little um, sort of top smoothing. So I think I have that one um, smooth. Now I'm going to grab my, if I can find it, a metal trowel of some kind. So here I have one here, so just a regular old metal trowel. And I'm going to go around the edges of this and I'm going to remove any of the wax that's on the stencil. So this is going to be important for later. But at the same time, we always save our little bits. I'm gonna throw that back in my warm wax. I'm just removing around the edges first. And now I'm going over the whole body. There we go. So. See, I removed a lot of that wax. I'll throw that back in. Waste not, want not. And I'm going to raise the stencil. So, like I said, 
Are you ready for big surprises? So this is the crow one here. Hard to see. Remember, I chose white. But I chose white for a reason. I'm just going to fuse this one more time. What that's going to do is it's just going to round the edges just a little bit. Not too, too much. Okay, now if you've had any bleed through, you might want to use just a little pottery tool or a little tool of some kind and just ever so gently remove any of the fuzzy bits. Just around the beak I had one or two little leak through spots. And I think that's it for now. So now comes the, the excite, well, I think it's exciting because it's something that we've never carried in stock before. Um, but I want you to see how great this is going to be. So I'm going to use some, um, some leaf. Now we have gold leaf and copper leaf and silver leaf. You can use the flakes or you can use the sheets. For this demo, I'm just going to use the sheets and I'm going to use copper. I tend to gravitate towards the gold, but you know, for something different, um, I'm going to use the copper today. Now, normally I would use, um, let me try and separate this. It takes a little concentration. The leaf is so delicate. So there's two different types of foils. When you go on the website, you'll see that. One is um, the foils that you have to use through a stylus or something, but these are just the sheets. So the gilding sheets and on mixed media you need a gilding size or gilding glue but on this project we actually won't need it because we have warm and caustic so um, I'm going to try to remove that and these sheets do fly away and I have a fan going so I'll try to do this as carefully as possible there we go so I'm just going to apply that. And rub it on. So if you use the flakes, you just use the pieces and you just adhere them. I'm going to grab another sheet. And I'm covering the entire crow in the copper. Pushing it down into the warm wax. So as you can see, I've got a lot of um, new products that we're demoing today. And these products will be um, explained in different projects and things like that so I try not to when I'm sourcing projects just trying to find something that isn't just useful for one day so to speak right like I like it to be able to be useful and translate into all different aspects of your practice so I'm just now rubbing with my finger and I'm going along making sure that there is copper in the entire bird. I'm trying not to go on the outside of it too much because I'm going to have to scrape that back. So it's going to be a little impossible over the feet. And you'll see this stuff gets everywhere. I'm going to remove as much as I can. Whoops, I didn't press well enough there. If there's any missed spots, I can go back and add later, but I'm trying to tear off any excess. And I'm just going to use a paper towel, maybe that'll help me. So you can see that some of it is already burnished to the outside, but that's okay. Because we're just going to use our 
our razor blade to go and clean that up. So I have just a little tool here. If I can find a bigger razor blade, this might not be as painful to watch. Let's see if I can find something bigger nearby. Of course not, it's impossible to think of everything to be at your fingertips. Anyway, you'll have to just bear with me for a moment. Let's talk amongst ourselves for a moment. If you have any questions, make sure you um, fire them off to me. I can, I can take a moment to look up and answer any questions. If you're part of the Painting with Fire, make sure when you order your products on our website on www.curatednest.com, make sure you add your Painting with Fire discount code And once we verify that, then you will get your, your discount. So, a 15%. So 15% is 15%. And don't forget we are in Canada, so compared to many of your um, currencies, our prices are very attractive. There we go. So if I had a little razor blade, this would make this process just a wee bit faster, but for now I'm just using this metal edge thing and I'm trying not to cut into it, rather I'm, I'm keeping it parallel to the surface of the wax so that I can remove. For the finer areas, I can get in with that little tool that I had. lovely little carving process feels very satisfying okay so I pretty much have the crow delineated now and now I'm just removing a little bit of the finer stuff and then I think we're gonna give this guy because he looks a little low I think we're gonna give him a crown and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that very free form. So if I had a little stencil at hand, I would use it. But instead, I'm just going to show you how to free form that. And because I have a lot of um, black down here and none up here, I think I might do the, the crown in black. So let me just get rid of that excess copper and I believe that part is done. So you can see how crazy that is, right? It is so iridescent and um, I would go around with this little tool and clean it all up to make sure that I don't have any little bits of copper but because you guys are very patiently watching, I am just gonna get right to the crown so that we don't have to, um, I don't have to keep you waiting too long. So I'm gonna use a smaller um, paintbrush for this and my black wax. So I'm gonna bring my black wax over here. And what I might do with my tool first is I'm just gonna sketch where I want this, what I want this crown to look like. There we go. So I have it etched in there just with a tool. You can't really see it, but now maybe it'll give the wax a little bit of a guideline to follow. And I'm going to move my black up here. Now this isn't a very opaque black that I have heated up, but I think it'll be fine for our purposes. So I'm using a natural hair bristle brush and I'm using a smaller brush rather than a big application brush. And because it's small, it transfer, it, sorry, it transfers little, um, a very little amount of wax each time. 
So we're just going to build up in small increments. And I'm using my little um, outline that I did to be my guide. Now it's very lumpy because I'm applying it with a small brush, but the fusing will take care of that. Now we don't want to overfuse because it's just going to run everywhere. So I want to just make sure that I'm getting it smooth softly and incrementally, okay? There we go. So while I'm at it, I might as well also fuse the copper. So fusing of the copper just helps it um, become one with the wax, if you will. Again, we don't want to overfuse because it will move. It's also rounding those edges nicely from where it's built up on the stencil. And I think that's enough for now. And then I'm going to use my little tool to go back in and shape it the exact way I want it. removing any of the little bits or fuzzy bits that don't exactly suit the style. Cleaning that up. Excellent. And now because this is black underneath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of that copper And I'm going to lay it on top. And I don't mind if some of the black comes through because it's got a relationship to the black branch at the bottom. Okay, so burnishing it in again with my finger. Now cleaning it up with a tool. So if I had wanted the entire crow to be black with the metal on top, then I would have, instead of putting the white wax in the first place, I would have done the black wax. Um, I just felt it might have been a little harsh for what I was doing, but for For your own purposes, just know that it's not the color of wax that that actually mattered. In my case, I just wanted it to um, be look like copper. But you'll see in one moment here with the crown how the black changes the whole look of the of that crown and like I said it brings a relationship to the bottom. I'm going to fuse that and clean that up. Okay so there's a few little bits I still could clean up and and before I go and and um, give it a last fuse or change any of the colors or do anything like that before I go any further I'm just going to show you and we'll sign off for today, but I wanted to show you the finished piece of the crowned crow sitting on the branch using a lot of our new products. So um, again, too many to list, but I am going to um, 
put this on our YouTube channel and then also I'm going to be doing more lives all the time using our products so that you can see what we've got going on in the store. So Curated Nest has changed to art supplies that are mainly compatible for uh, mixed media artists and also those transitioning their mixed media paintings into encaustic. So thanks for watching and I'm glad to hear that the uh, Wi-Fi worked out here because that was the main reason for me trying this in my new studio. So take care everybody, we'll see you next time.